Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and we are back to continue our bleeding and coagulation disorders playlist. Thank you so much for responding to the survey and letting me know, so let's get started. So here is the deal. These are the bleeding and coagulation disorders. As you know, for us to coagulate, several things happen. First, vasoconstriction, then primary hemostasis, thanks to platelets. After that, we have secondary hemostasis, thanks to coagulation factors. And then fibrinolysis, you dissolve the clot and restore the normal function of the blood blood flowing smoothly so vasoconstriction physiology we have talked about it before pathology vascular disorders this is the topic of today's video and then primary hemostasis physiology done pathology clinically done petechiae purpura ecchymosis we have spoken about them before diseases not done yet pharmacology we did the aspirin we did not do the other drugs such as clopidogrel parasogrel Apsiximab, terofiban, eptifabetide, etc. After that, we have secondary hemostasis. Physiology is done. We have talked about it before. Pathology. Clinically, we have the deep bleeding. We'll talk about that later. And diseases such as hemophilia. Again, we'll talk about that later. Pharmacology. This is the heparin, the warfarin, etc. Also, we'll talk about that later. Next is the fibrolysis. Physiology done. Pathology not done yet. Pharmacology done. I've talked about the TPA alteplase, tenecteplase, streptokinase, etc. So what's the problem here, medicosis? Vascular disorder. The problem is in the vessel. Okay, there is the blood vessel and the platelets cannot interact with a poor vessel. So it will end up with bleeding. Drops of blood, this is bleeding. Now, if we do something called platelet count, if we count the platelets, will you find them normal, high or low? And the answer is normal. How about doing the bleeding time? What is the objective of this test. Let me tell you about this test. This is for the platelet number. This test is for the platelet function. So there is a huge difference. Platelet number is normal. How about platelet function? You'll say, oh, platelet function is normal. Yes, that's true. But platelets cannot function if the blood vessel is not normal. So bleeding time could be high or it could be normal as well. How about PT and PTT? What is PT, prothrombin time? Is it for the extrinsic or the intrinsic? It's for the extrinsic co coagulation pathway. So it's going to be normal because there is nothing problematic here. PTT is for the intrinsic coagulation pathway and it's going to be normal. What will the symptoms of vascular disorders be? Similar to the symptoms of primary hemostasis disorders, petechiae, purpura, ecchymosis, dark purple patches on the skin because of the mucosal bleeding, Vascular disorders, baby. Disorders of the blood vessel. Oh, wow. You don't say. Clinically, mucocutaneous bleeding, similar to primary hemostasis disorders, petechiae, purpura, and ecchymosis, and spontaneous bruising. Lab, platelet count, normal, because the platelet number is normal. Bleeding time could be normal, could be prolonged. The platelets themselves are functional, but they cannot function alone. They need a good blood vessel. Vascular disorders could be inherited, they could be acquired. Let me give you some examples of vascular disorders. Remember, scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency. Remember, Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Unfortunately, when people think of Marfan syndrome, they think it's a disease of collagen. Shut up, it's not true. It's a disease of elastin, and that's a very famous mistake among students and doctors. Vascular disorders. We have lipoprotein disorders. These are familial disorders, like familial hypercholesterolemia, A beta lipoproteinemia, stuff like that. Arteriosclerosis, which include atherosclerosis, aneurysms, venous system disorders, lymphatic disorders, vascular tumors and tumor like diseases, vasculitides. This is vasculitic disorders, the vasculitis, and hypertension. Vascular disorders. Remember this? Vascular tumors and tumor like? Yep, they include angiosarcoma, hemangioma, Kaposi sarcoma, Osler Weber Rendo, also known as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, vasculitis, giant cell arthritis, also known as temporal arthritis. We have talked about this in a previous video. Takayasu, polyarthritis nodosa, Kawasaki, Burger's disease. By the way, in medicine, we have two burgers. The first one is B U E, like this one. And next one is BER, Berger's. Okay, these are not the same. This one is thromboangiitis obliterans, related to smoking. This one is IgA nephropathy. Vascular disorders, we have another classification, inherited or hereditary, and acquired. 
hereditary, such as hereditary hemorrhagic laryngectasia, also Weberendo, Morphin syndrome, a problem with elastin, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, pseudoxanthoma elasticum, arteriovenous malformation, but the acquired are henoxalium purpura, the most common vasculitis in children, senile purpura, old grandpa, paraproteinemia such as multiple myeloma, and scurvy vitamin C deficiency. Do you remember the problem in scurvy? Yeah, I do not have vitamin C. So what? I will not be able to hydroxylate proline and lysine. So I have a problem with the enzyme called prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl oxidase, not to be confused with lysol. If my collagen is weak, my blood vessel wall is weak. If my blood vessel wall is weak, I will bleed. Let's talk about hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia osler weber rondo syndrome. Autosomal dominant, which means it runs in my family. So if I have it, it's usually my mom or my dad have it, and my grandma or grandpa has it. What's the issue here? The vessels are thin, the wall is very thin, and it's dilated. Vessel dilated, wall is thin, which will lead to telangiectasia. I love this word. Look at this. What does ectasia mean? Ectasia means dilation. What does angio mean? Angio means vessel. What does tele mean? Distant, far. You remember telescope, television? So telangiectasia is dilation of distant vessels. I love it. I mean, I love the word, not the disease. Telangiectasia. What, what do you mean by distant vessels? You see this? Like vessels in your lips. These are, this is not your freaking coronary artery, which is proximal. This is distal vessels. When we have telangiectasia, the vessels are weak and they are thin and dilated. They will rupture. When they rupture, they will bleed. When they will bleed, I'll get petechiae purpura in my fingers, mucosa, toes, trunk, tongue, etc. And of course, I can develop spontaneous bleeding. When I bleed, I lose blood. Blood contains RBCs. RBCs contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin contains heme and globin. Heme contains iron and protoporphyrin. Iron. You see this? I get iron deficiency anemia, which is the most common subtype of anemia in the whole freaking world. If the patient came from a very poor and destitute country, the most common cause is nutritional. But if a patient came from a very rich country, the most common cause is a GI bleed in an old guy or menstrual bleeding in a young lady. Nose bleed. Possible. GI bleed. Possible and common. Urogenital bleed. Also can happen. So please remember. Hereditary hemorrhagic laryngectasia, it's autosomal dominant, my vessels are weak, I bleed here in my lips, very common, and GI bleed. When there is GI bleed, there is dark stool. And when there is dark stool, there is a positive stool guaiac test. Henoxon lion purpura will be the topic of the next video. But real quick here, it's the most common cause of vasculitis in children. Okay, what's the problem here? The problem here is that first they get an upper respiratory infection. And then after the upper respiratory infection, they develop something else. They develop a problem in the kidney, IgA nephropathy and hematuria, and bleeding in the GI bleed, which will lead to black stool. This vasculitis is nasty because it affects arterioles, venules, and even capillaries. Look at this, palpable petechiae on the buttocks and the lower legs. I mean, the entire leg can have purpura. The platelet count is going to be normal, baby. They can ask you a trick question. What kind of infection happened in the upper respiratory tract? It was an upper respiratory tract infection due to usually virus or group A strep. And that's why it might be a good idea to run the rapid strep throat test, which can include but cannot exclude the diagnosis. Senile purpura. Old grandpa, there is decreased collagen support in the vessel wall because grandpa is so old. As you get older, everything deteriorates. So while you're young and bragging about this now, remember that one day you'll get old and you'll suffer from all of this. So be grateful and enjoy your youth. Enjoy your smoothie, silky skin, which is devoid of purpura. You pathetic, ungrateful piece of melanin. Ah, I'm so sorry, joking. But since we were talking about bleeding today, I thought it's a good idea to talk about Milena. Forgive me. Accidentally, Grandpa hit something. Dark, flattened blotches on his skin. And then they resolve, but they leave a scar. Not a scar, but like age spots. 
on the extensor surface, such as the back of the hands, the back of the forearms, or the extensor surface of the forearm, and the thin shin of the tibia. Is the shin of the tibia considered extensor surface? Yeah, because if you remember anatomy and the rotation of the upper extremities, which is different from the rotation of the lower extremities, you know that the upper limbs are different from the lower limbs. You don't believe me? Example. Look at your antecubital fossa. Look at you. Look at this elbow. This is the antecubital fossa. And when you flex, you move your hand like this, your forearm upwards. But now look at your knee. Look at the same person. This is your knee. Okay. Now, where is your fossa? Is it anterior or posterior? It's posterior, called the popliteal fossa. Why is it anterior here and posterior here? Because they rotate differently during embryology. Does anyone remember embryology? When you flex your forearms, it moves upwards and forwards. But when you flex your lower leg at the knee, it moves backwards, baby. They are the opposite. So this is the extensor surface in the upper extremity, and this is the extensor surface in the lower extremity. So shin of the tibia is extensor. Do you think I'm joking with you? And here is, here is a very, very good question, exam question. Family members trying to sue a senior home for elderly abuse because grandpa was at the senior home, and they saw some dark spots on the skin. They thought that they were abusing the, his, her, his, her, their grandpa and they wanted to take them to court. Do they have a case if the lesions are like dark, flat, and blotches on the extensor surface? No, they do not have a case. Hashtag fake lawyer. But what if the case was broken bones, lesions and bruises on the buttocks, multiple rib fractures, brain hemorrhage? Do they have a case? Yes, they do. Everything is about context and not some lovely people trying to make a quick buck. It freaking depends. The proof is in the pudding. In senile purpure, there is no bleeding. Platelet count is normal. Bleeding time is normal. PT and PTT are normal. Oh, by the way, on my website, I have 50 hematology cases about bleeding and coagulation disorders written by yours truly. Warning, they are really hard, but they are worth it. Question of the day. What will you find when you biopsy the palpable purpura on the buttocks in a patient with henoch shonley and purpura? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer in the next video. And we are done with vascular disorders. Speaking of the next video, it's going to be a great mnemonic about henoch shonley and purpura. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Please do. You can get my 50 hematology cases, my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, my electrolytes course, my lymphoma notebook, leukemia notebook, and lots of other goodies available at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.